Hello everyone. We've got another new fine-tuned model based on WAN 2.1 called Mocha. This one's basically for character replacement, kind of like the WAN 2.2 animate that we talked about last month. But here, they're using the WAN 2.1 model and somehow still achieving really similar results. And the best part? It doesn't rely on a ton of control net poses or masking multiple frames. Nope. It just uses a single masked frame from the beginning of your source video. All you need to do is provide reference images, like a close-up shot of the face and a full-body image showing the character's outfit, and combine those into your reference input. Then you pass that along with your source video and a destination mask, and you can generate a replacement video that looks just like what WAN 2.2 Animate does. Now, we're going to check out how this runs in Comfy UI because even though it's technically just a WAN 2.1 model, it's got a lot of enhancements that let it pull off those WAN 2.2 animate style features. Here's a quick comparison between WAN Anime from Clang AI and their new Mocha model, just to show you how they're different. Check out the lighting on the character. Even when there's a light bulb above or off to the side at different angles, Mocha can relight the character really well. And in different scenes, like with this 3D character, it even mimics the eye movements and gaze direction from the original video. The lighting adapts too. When the light bulb moves behind the character's head, you can still see the lighting adjust nicely. Even Spider-Man in a dark scene doesn't get blown out or crushed into shadows, it stays balanced. So definitely check out those comparisons. Also, there's a GitHub page and a Hugging Face model page. Right now though, the Hugging Face page doesn't have much info. It might get a research paper posted later. For now, Mocha is basically a fine-tuned version of the WAN 2.1 text-to-video base model. On the GitHub page, you'll see that you can run this in Comfy UI. So go check it out. But remember to update your Comfy UI WAN video wrapper before you try running this model. Once you do that update, you'll get the Mocha workflow and some new keywords that tell you your wrapper is compatible. Do that first, and you should be able to run Mocha without any issues. All right. Now let's jump into the Comfy UI interface. We're going to try out the example workflow and maybe add a few enhancements to it. First off, let's peek at the Hugging Face page. You'll see the folder is labeled Preview, so this model is currently in preview mode. It's huge, 28 gigabytes. That's a lot for an average or even a decent PC. But don't worry, there's another option, an FP8 downsized version of Mocha. You can grab that from the WAN Video Comfy FP8 repo in the WAN Video Wrapper. That one's only about 14 gigabytes, which is still hefty, but way more manageable for most systems. So this time, we're gonna go with the FP8 version and run the example workflow JSON in Comfy UI. Once you drag that JSON file into Comfy UI, make sure you've also downloaded the FP8 model and placed it in your models folder specifically inside the diffusion underscore models subfolder. I like to create a WAN 2.1 subfolder inside there to keep everything organized, especially if you've already got other WAN 2.1 models saved. When you load the example workflow JSON, you'll see something like this. Now, I've tested this before, and I didn't remove the background in my first try, so the character ended up dragging the background wall along with them, which made the result look a little off. Still, in some ways, it kind of resembled WAN 2.2 Animate. For that first test, I didn't use any text prompts. I just wanted to see how it looked raw. And honestly, it handled some pretty tough scenes. Like, this fast action sequence here is actually really hard for WAN 2.2 Animate. I tested it before and it didn't work well at all. So I figured this would be a good stress test for Mocha's limits. One cool thing about this workflow? It only uses one image from the entire video, just a single frame, for masking. You don't have to mask every frame. In this setup, we're using a Segmentation 2 model loader to grab that one frame and generate a mask from it. That's the only mask the model needs. From there, Mocha automatically tracks the character's motion and position throughout the whole video, based just on that first frame mask. It's pretty impressive how it keeps up with all the movement and action. Now, about the reference images, there are some notes from the author with recommendations. Reference 1 should be your full character image, and reference 2 should be a close-up shot of that same character's face. For example, if you're using reference 1 here, you should definitely remove the background first. 
Otherwise, you'll get that sticky background effect where the wall or whatever's behind the character moves along with them, like in my earlier test. Not cool. So we're going to add a background removal node to clean that up before resizing and feeding it into the embedding node for WAN video processing. I like using the Ben 2 model for background removal. It works great. Just connect the image through the Remove Background node, then into the Resize node. Make sure the background color matches what the Resize node expects. Once you do that, you'll get a clean character image with no distractions. We'll do the same thing for Reference 2, but with a twist. Since Reference 2 is meant to enhance facial fidelity, we need a proper close-up. The note says it should be a close-up portrait of the character's face. To get that, I'm using a previous workflow I built with Quen Image Edit. It's super handy. You can take your reference one image and generate a tight close-up of the face. Just give it a prompt like, close-up portrait shot of the woman, and let it run. In just a second, you'll get a generated image that keeps the same face, pose, and angle, but zoomed in nice and tight. Once I've got that close-up, I'll copy it over into this workflow as Reference 2. And yep, you guessed it, we still need to remove the background and resize it to match the dimensions used elsewhere in the workflow. So I'll hook it up to the same Remove Background and Resize nodes. For this first run though, I'm actually not going to use Reference 2. I just want to see how it looks with only Reference 1. That way, we can compare the difference later when we add the face close-up. The model setup stays the same. We're loading the Mocha FP8 model and using the Light X 2V LoRa for low sampling steps. There's also a note about block swapping, 40 blocks for lower VRAM systems, but since I've got good enough of VRAM, I'll try 20 instead. For the VAE and text encoders, we're sticking with the standard WAN 2.1 setup, the usual VAE model, and the UMT5 text encoder. As for prompts, they don't really matter much here since the style is driven almost entirely by the reference images. A simple prompt is totally fine. All right, everything's set. Sampling steps are at six default settings. I'll also add a separate video output node so we only see the final VAE decoded result without any comparison overlays. Now, let it run. Once the text encoder loads, we'll see how it looks using just reference one. Okay. It took about 1 minute and 22 seconds to generate this short clip, and it used around 20 gigabytes of VRAM, which is why I could get away with fewer block swaps. If you're on different hardware, you might need to tweak those settings yourself. Overall, it looks pretty good, especially now that we've removed the background and focused cleanly on the character in reference 1, but the face? Still not super clear. It doesn't matter if it's a fast action scene or not, the details just aren't popping. And remember, this is a preview version, not a final release. So we'll have to wait and see if future updates improve performance. Next up, we'll run another test, but this time with both Reference 1 and Reference 2. I'm also going to integrate the Quen Image Edit workflow directly into this one so the whole process, from generating the close-up to animating the video, happens in a single flow. I'll connect the Reference 1 image straight into the Quen node then route its output to become Reference 2. After a little cleanup and reorganization, everything should be neatly grouped and ready to go. And there you have it. Mocha plus Quen Image Edit, all in one workflow. The whole point of Quen here is to auto-generate that close-up face shot from your full body reference. Here's another example I'm showing, just a classic, super familiar video clip. I mask the character using only one frame, like we talked about. That's it. Just one image to guide the entire video generation. No control net, no frame by frame masking like in WAN 2.2 Animate. What's special about this fine tuned WAN 2.1 model is that it can swap the character across every frame of the video using only that single initial mask. While that's rendering, I'm also generating Reference 2 for Luffy the character I'm swapping in. Once everything looks good, I'll enable the sampling and move to the final processing step. All right, we've got the result. The character swap worked perfectly and the animation is super smooth. Jumping, walking, all that classic motion. 
and now that we're using reference 2 for the face, you can see way more detail. Here's another example using a different female anime character. Both reference images are of the same character, and it works without a hitch. And here's a third example, with yet another character. Also, no issues. You can even see subtle facial expressions, though since it's not a close-up, they're not super obvious. But from my view, it's working. So, that's it for this video. Honestly, this feels way simpler than WAN 2.2 Animate, no control net needed, fewer things to manage, just a cleaner, more straightforward way to do character replacement in video editing. I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great day, and see ya.